From Interior Alaska's most trusted news source, this is the Fairbanks Evening News Weekend Edition. Good evening and welcome to the Saturday edition of the Fairbanks Evening News. I'm Katie Looper, leading our news tonight. People were standing in line today at the Shoppers Forum Mall to get sensitive documents shredded for free by Alaska Shred Company. The Secure Your ID event was sponsored by the Better Business Bureau of Alaska and the United Way of the Tanana Valley. The main theme was identity theft with workshops and information on how to protect yourself from online computer hackers or dumpster divers looking for discarded documents. One of the workshops was presented by the representative of the Alaska Attorney General's Office, who said it's more important than ever for people to be careful with what personal information they let others have access to. And securing personal information is a big deal these days. Um, there's several hundred reports a year of identity theft from Alaska. Um, a lot of identity theft victims don't report um, the crime, and so it, it's a fairly important issue, I think, as more and more we're seeing more and more data breaches with personal information and um, security issues. We'll have more on how you can prevent identity theft next week during the Fairbanks Evening News and News Center Final. And today, the UAF School of Management and an exciting, hosts an exciting competition that encourages invention, entrepreneurship, and creativity. Today was the sixth annual Arctic Innovation Competition at the UAF Wood Center Ballroom. This competition is designed to give inventors of all levels the opportunity to present their invention idea without any elaborate business plans or prototypes. The Arctic Innovation Competition, it's a very unique event. We have three divisions. A, a division for adults, a division for teens, and a division for children. After all the idea submissions were made in advance, the judges chose the most well-received ideas. And today, those selected inventors set up a science fair-like display and then gave a short five-minute pitch to the judges who came from diverse areas of business and engineering expertise. So our invention is a ground control station for drones. It's called Routinely. Uh, basically, it's hardware inside a box and software that runs on a user's uh, tablet, laptop, or smartphone and allows them to fly drones in a way that's safe, reliable, but most of all, useful for a professional to get work done. Basically, a heated and insulated pipe coupling. And for mobile applications, I built this to go um, in the back of a pickup truck between the water tank and the ball valve so that the ball valve wouldn't freeze up. Inventors from around the state and even Laura 48 came to compete. One girl who just turned 13 years old today came all the way from Florida with an idea. We're going to be doing an anti-graffiti app for our innovation. Um, well, you know when you go around and you see graffiti and stuff, usually what you have to do now is you have to like call City Hall and it takes like a really long time. You download the app, um, you take a picture or a video, and then it sends to both City Hall and the police department. The competition will finish up later this evening with an award ceremony celebration. The first place winner could receive a check for $10,000, so we asked a few inventors what they would do with the prize money. If we win, uh, we're going to keep inventing and keep uh, you know, marketing and keep pushing forward. If we could make these and make them affordable and get them to market, that would make me, that would make me very happy. Just seeing this utilized, being able to solve a problem that people have. This event is made possible by several generous sponsors. Inventors are asked to compete every other year, but in case you missed it this year, everyone is invited to submit their invention ideas for 2015. Reporting from the Arctic Innovation Competition, this is Katie Looper. Many have been in the unfortunate position where they have been attacked, threatened, or bullied by someone else. Self-defense classes can teach the basics on how to defend oneself, boost confidence, social skills, learning skills, and physical abilities. That's why this weekend, Orion's Belt School of Self-Defense is offering self-defense classes for individuals of all ages. After a story went viral about the recent killing of a real estate agent in Arkansas, local realtors gathered Friday night to learn how to better prepare themselves for any situation. And tomorrow, Orion's Belt is offering self-defense classes to the public in conjunction with their annual kickathon. The public is invited to come watch or participate in the kickathon, which entails an entire hour of non-stop kicking. Martial arts students raise money for the Yukon Quest in advance and then host the kickathon and celebration. 
Yukon Quest competitors and sled dogs will be attending the event in appreciation as well. In kicks, you have to touch the floor and kick a bag or kick something that somebody is doing a count. And um, so far, our highest kick count in an hour has been 12,400 kicks. Actually, we use the Kickathon to uh, do our martial arts day, which we have a proclamation from the city mayor. And we also do a um, self-defense classes for three to four year olds and for teenagers. And we're going to do one for women's self-defense uh, throughout the day. We'll have more when the weekend's only televised newscast returns. Stay with us. Welcome back to this weekend edition. Three years ago, Rob Fisher and his wife, Debbie Fisher, said they felt like Fairbanks should have a local haunted house. So starting from scratch, the Fisher Fishers developed Fairbanks Asylum. The haunted warehouse is located right next to Ice Alaska and is only open seasonally. This Halloween experience is not for the easily startled. They've incorporated realistic sets and actors to create a very unique and exhilarating experience walking through the asylum. This year they have expanded and are open every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night to give you a thrill. This year, the size of this is so much bigger than we've had in previous years. Uh, it's a longer walkthrough. Um, we were able just to do a lot more pull out all the stops, add more stuff, and just make it bigger. And I think that's what re people really wanted was a bigger haunted house to go through. The scariest haunt in Alaska. The Pioneer Park Centennial Center was alive with culture this afternoon at the 28th annual Fairbanks International Friendship Day. As per tradition, the Fairbanks Youth Orchestra opened this event that brings together many of the Golden Heart City's cultures. From traditional Alaska native dance to waltz, over 25 cultural music-related performances took the stage in a five-hour span. The balcony of the center was lined with booths featuring cultural information, arts and crafts, as well as international cuisine. For the first time in the 28-year 20 year history of the event, Bollywood dance took the stage. Both dancers quite thrilled as they explained the story behind their performance. It was a lot of fun. It was kind of terrifying to see how many people there were, but it was so much fun. And there's just so much energy. Yeah. Awesome. She's a deity, I guess that'd be correctly. Um, she She's paired up with Krishna, who's another one of them, and she's just kind of, she's his follower, her worship, his worshiper, and so we were kind of representing that, except in a more modern style. This weekend, Fort Wainwright Community Spouses Club hosted their annual Holly Days Bazaar. For the 32nd year in a row, spouses got together with hundreds of vendors from the interior to showcase their goods for military personnel and civilians alike. The bazaar draws in many visitors from on post as well as those who simply stop by the visitor center to get a pass to drive on base. Usually the event is hosted at the PFC Gym, however, it's com after its completion, the event was hosted at the brand new Hangar 5. Volunteers say it's a positive thing to do for the Community Spouses Club. Everything that we make goes back into the community. It doesn't just stay on Fort Wainwright, it also benefits Fairbanks as well. Um, most of our monies that we raise goes back to scholarships. There's a lot of background work. We have to get garrison approval for all the food vendors. We have to, we had to coordinate with the um, commander of the building to use this facility. Um, the soldiers put in a lot of time prepping the building for us, which we're extremely grateful for. And it's time once again for another spotlight on one of the 21 agencies making up the United Way of the Tanana Valley. Tonight we focus on the Boys and Girls Club of the Tanana Valley. Here's News Center's Mike Schultz. Tanana Valley has been in existence since the mid-2000s, and their goal is to enable all young people to reach their full potential as productive, caring, and responsible citizens. Sarah Nichols is the executive director for the agency and says without the assistance they get from the United Way of the Tanana Valley, their agency would be lost. Um, the United Way uh, is a huge assistance to us. It goes directly to youth programming here at the club. Um, it's unrestricted funds, so it really helps out where um, grants necessarily are, are restricted funds for a certain um, purpose. The United Way uh, funds we can put directly to a basketball. Um, we can put directly to art brushes or whatever funds that we need um, to directly impact the youth. I asked Sarah what she and her staff were most proud of for their contributions to the community. 
I'm really proud of the fact that um, we serve the amount of kids that we do. Um, that upstairs in the clubhouse is a um, full spectrum of youth um, from seven years old. Um, right now, I believe the oldest we have is 15. They come from all different backgrounds. Um, they come from all different uh, walks of life. They have different learning abilities, different levels, skills, and they somehow manage to coexist for four hours beautifully upstairs. What is it that Sarah feels is her most specific, fulfilling, and rewarding moment? I think to me the most rewarding moment is um, kind of a, a general, when parents come to pick their kids up, they know that they've been someplace that made an impact on them. Um, that they, you know, I've had a parent one time come up to me and say, I get to go home and be mom. I don't have to go home and be a teacher. I don't have to go home and look over their homework. I know that got done. I know it got completed. And I know that they got out some of their wiggles and some of their energy. And so I get to go home and make dinner and just be mom. The campaign continues until early next year. Remember, all donations stay within the community. Mike Schultz reporting. Austin Buchanan is coming up with all the sports local action. Stay with us. Hello Interior Sports fans, Austin Buchanan here with a jam-packed Saturday sports cast. So, let's get to it. Can you believe high school football championships took place today down in Anchorage? That's right. Well, in game one, it was North Pole battling the undefeated Sodatna, Sodatna, correction, stars for the medium school state championship. Here we go, handoff inside North Pole's territory as number two runs in for their six. North Pole comes out looking to answer back, but throws in the traffic for an interception as Ty Fitton reads the pass. Then again, Fitton gets his name call, called on offense, taking it to the house for a touchdown in just the first half. He had three touchdowns over 100 total yards of offense. Soldatna keeps the offensive momentum alive, this time with a quarterback keeper that will go for six. 30-0 lead for the Stars. With just under 12 minutes left, North Pole finds the end zone for the first time in the ball game. But Patriots still having trouble slowing down the Stars offense is the answer on the quarterback keeper once again. Now it's time for the handoff as Ty Fenton marches down the field for six. Check this out. For six, Ty Fenton all the way down the field. And with that, the championship will come to a close with a final score, 57 to 20. Well, the Alaska Nanooks had their first game of the Bryce Alaska Gold Rush last night. Joe Cook was there and has more. The Alaska Nanooks took the ice in the Carlson Center on Friday night, and the Nanooks got their first look at the Air Force Falcons. UAF was under the gun early as the Falcons swooped down on the Nanooks, scoring two goals in the first three minutes of the game. Jordan Hemley's tally just 220 in, and only 34 seconds later, Chad Demers, he scores. Down 0-2, Alaska would get on the board in the second period, seconds after killing a penalty, Brandon Morley to Nolan Kaiser, who finds Austin Veith. Veith finds a small window and finds net for his first career goal, 1-2 game early in the second period. The Falcons, though, they will respond by converting a power play goal by Scott Helm to increase the Air Force lead to 3-1. Then, with two minutes left in the second period, Welcome back, Tyler Morley. In his season debut, coming back from a knee injury, falling down, Morley scores on his back. The Nanooks trail 2-3 going into the third period. And in that third period, Colton Pareko just doing what Pareko does. Nolan Heisman's second assist of the night goes to Pareko on the equalizer as the captain takes Alaska hockey fans to the gun show. 3-3 game now as Alaska converts the four-on-three opportunity. Less than five minutes later, Peter Krieger, the rookie, scores the game-winning goal at the 17-35 mark of the third period. Nolan Youngman and Trevor Campbell assisted on the play. Alaska completes the comeback, winning 4-3 over Air Force and their Bryce Alaska goal rush opener. So far, I like the adversity that we have and just the will to fight back and uh, not give up, especially when we're down 2 nothing. It was a hard game. There's lots of things that happen in those games that force your team to be strong mentally. And um, I think we learned a little bit about ourselves tonight and certainly positive to get the win and set up to, uh, tomorrow night to go against Penn State to hopefully win our tournament. 
In the early game on Friday, UAA and Penn State locked horns. The Nittly Lions saw their 3-1 lead vanish in the third period. UAA ripped off two third period goals to force a 3-3 tie. The game would go into overtime, but there were some chances, but no goals. So it will go into books as a 3-3 tie. But to determine a winner in this Bryce tournament, a winner was determined by shootout. Hayden Troop scored the game winner on the third and last attempt in the best of three attempts. So UAA will go on to win their Bryce opener 4-3, winning the shootout 1-0. Nil. The Seawolves will play Air Force Saturday at 4.07 p.m. at the Carlson. Thanks, Joe. Well, with football season ending, well, basketball season is just hitting the hardwood floor. Earlier today, I stepped into the gym to check out the Nanooks shooting around before head coach Mick Durham prepares his team for their first game, which is going to be held November 14th inside the Patty Center against Trinity International, who finished the season with a 5-25 overall record, 3-16 in their conference. The Nanooks finished last year's season with a 10-18 record, coming or going 11-2 at home and 5-5 on the road. The Nanooks gave 12 new guys or have 12 new guys on the floor, and so far one senior returner starter, the captain says he feels like the team chemistry is there. We're advancing in that area every day. Um, you know, it, chemistry is just all about getting reps together and getting more time together. You know, us having a new team, it was hard at first, but every day I see improvement in chemistry and guys are, are knowing where each other are at and it's, it's getting better every day. And I'll do it for sports on this Saturday. Katie Looper is up next with your full weather forecast. Good evening and welcome back to our Saturday edition of the Fairbanks Evening News. It was a big day at UAF, huh? Yeah, yeah, I got to go watch some of the basketball players shoot around. I'm pretty excited to see some Nanooks basketball this year and uh, getting ready for our first game in November and then Joe being down in Anchorage. So um, for the football, I can't believe football is already ending. Oh, I know. <laughs> Seems like it should have ended a while back, though, since it's already, like, snowing. Yeah, and I heard some cold. people talking while we was, uh, you know, shooting some footage of the basketball practice and stuff about something else taking place. There. Yep, our Arnick Innovation wow. Competition. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it got me thinking. That I, they had all these inventors with great ideas, and I'm thinking, wow, what am I doing? i got to think of something. You know the best ideas? What? Our weekend edition of KTBF 10 <laughs> All right, well, yeah, you can submit ideas next year if you think about it. Yeah, absolutely. But let's take a look at our weather now. We'll start with our almanac. There's a normal high today of 30 and a normal low of 15. A record high got all the way up to 63 in 1925, and can you believe it, minus 15 in, in 1915. Now, our sun rose at 8.55 this morning, and it'll set at 6.18 this evening. Our daylight equals 9 hours and 24 minutes altogether giving us a loss of six minutes from yesterday. But now let's check out what's going on around the rest of the state today. Over in the Juneau and Ketchikan area, just rain showers for them. But in our Anchorage Bowl and Kodiak, cloudy skies and snow showers for Kodiak. As for Cold Bay and Bethel, partly sunny to sunny skies. Cold Bay, it's 40 degrees and 35 in Bethel. But up in Nome and Denali Park, they're having partly sunny skies as well in the low 30s. Now we move up north to Barrow, cloudier skies, temperatures around 18. As for Fort Yukon, cloudy skies as well, and temperatures around 30. Now let's check out what's going on around the lower 48. 67 in Seattle with partly sunny skies, but over for Billings, Salt Lake, Denver area, clear skies for them in the low 70s. Now moving down south, Las Vegas and Phoenix region, 90 degrees in Phoenix still. And now moving to east, Minneapolis, Chicago area, low 50s for them, uh, partly sunny skies in our southeast region as well. And as for New York, D.C. area, low 70s with partly sunny skies. So it looks like just partly sunny skies all across the U.S. But now let's look at next week. Rainier and cooler temperatures there in our northwest, but warm temperatures in our southwest up through the Midwest. Thunder and lightning storms for the Texas region, however, pleasant skies in our deep south in Miami area with chillier skies in the northeast. Now let's see what's going on around Alaska, starting with the north slope. Isolated showers for Barrow, cloudy in Nome, also cloudy for Fort Yukon. Now down in the interior, Overall cloudy day for the interior of Alaska, 33 in Fairbanks and Healy, and 19 degrees in Delta. 
Now moving to our southeast region, rainy day for Kedjikan and, and Juneau. Temperatures there in the low 50s. Moving west, let's see what's going on there. Rain and snow in Cold Bay, cloudy in Bethel, and cloudy in Kodiak as well. Temperatures there at 30 in Bethel, 48 for Kodiak, and 41 in Cold Bay. And lastly, for our south central region, mostly cloudy in Anchorage, and Homer and partly sunny in Valdez. Temperatures all there in the mid 40s. And for tonight's forecast, 19 degrees with increasing clouds. As for tomorrow, 32 degrees with increasing high clouds as well and otherwise continued cool. And lastly, for extended outlook, partly sunny skies all across the board. 32 for Monday and Tuesday, 30 on Wednesday, and then temperature is going to drop a little bit on Thursday and Friday down to 25. And our nightly temperatures are going to keep pretty consistent, hang around there around 20 degrees. Wow. So still some cold weather, but I guess 30 is uh, very warm here in Alaska. <laughs> 30 degrees yeah, is warm. It's so. kind of like our standard, like 30 degrees is a yeah. great day, sun shining, you know. Absolutely. <laughs> so. It's a quite different from the rest of the states, as you can see, 90 in Phoenix. I'm so jealous. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> but that's going to wrap up our Saturday edition of the Fairbanks Evening News, and we're glad you could join us. Well, you can join us here six days a week at 6 and 11, or online anytime at webcenter11.com, and also check out our mobile app. Yep, and all of us from, have, from all of us here at the News Center, have a good night. Good night.